Hello, I am glad that you are joining us today for the lesson on how to factor polynomials. This lesson is going to cover topics in the standard 1.2c, and if you're going to be practicing more problems in Study Island afterwards, you're going to want the topic called factoring polynomials. And just so you know, I'm going to be showing you how to factor polynomials a little bit different than the way that your curriculum show you. And just over the years, I've taught this different ways, and this method seems to be the best way that works for most students. So I'm just going to show you a little bit different way. Um, I highly recommend that you take notes while you're taking learning this so that you have those to look back to. And if I go too fast, you can always pause or if you need to rewind or fast forward. And you can even pause at the beginning of a question, work it out, see how you do, and then watch what I do to see if you're doing it correct and you're good to go or if there's something you need to learn from a mistake. So I'm glad that you're here and let's go ahead and look at some examples. In this first example, you're going to want to look for the greatest common factor first. Anytime it talks about factoring, you want to look for the greatest common factor first. So if you're taking notes, and I hope you are, go ahead and pause and write that down. Look for the greatest common factor first while factoring. So to do that, you're going to look at your numbers, your coefficients first. So here I have 15, 10, and 25. What is the largest number they all have in common? 5. So that means I'm going to write a 5 down. And then I'm going to go and look at my variables. And I'm going to look at each different variable or letter first. So I have an x squared, x squared, x. What's the most they have in common? Well, I have 2, 2, and 1. 1 is the most they have in common. So I'm going to write down a single x. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the y's. I have y squared, y squared, and y squared. The most they have, they're all the same amount, so I'm going to go ahead and write down that amount y squared. And then I'm going to look at my z's. I have z cubed, z squared, z cubed. The most they all have in common is a squared, so I'm going to write down z squared. And then I'm going to write a parenthesis, and I'm going to go ahead and once I factor that out, once I divide that out, I'm going to write what I have left. So I have a 15. If I divide 5 out of 15, I'm left with a 3. If I have an x squared, I pull out one of those x's, so I'm left with an x. I have a y squared. I pull out y squared, so I don't have anything left, so I'm not going to write anything in my first term in the parentheses. And then I have a z cubed. I pull out two z's, the z squared, so I'm going to be left with the z here. And then I just repeat that for the next two terms. So I have a minus 10 here. Minus 10 divided by 5 is a minus 2. I have my next is x squared. I pulled out one of those x's, so I'm left with an x. Next, I have a y squared. I pulled out a y squared, so that's all of them, so I'm not going to write anything here because I don't have anything left. And the same with the z's. I have a z squared. I pulled out a z squared. I don't have any z's left, so I'm not going to write anything here. So I'm done with that middle term. I'm going to go ahead and look at my last term. I have a 25 for my coefficient. I divide out the 5 out front, and I'm left with a plus 5. And then I have an x. I pulled out an x already, so I removed them all out to the front, so I'm not left with any. So I'm not going to write any here because there's none left. I have a y squared. I moved a y squared out front, so there's going to be nothing left here. And then I have a z cubed. I moved a z squared, so I'm going to have one z left to write by my 5. And then I close my parentheses. Now, what's in my parentheses, I can't factor this anymore. So I'm done. So my answer in number one is going to be B. 
This next example is a trinomial. Tri meaning three, just like in tricycle. And it, so it has three terms, one, two, three. When you have a trinomial, you're going to want to see if you can factor it by breaking it into two sets of parentheses after you look for a greatest common factor. This, we have a 1, a 6, and a 16. The biggest number they have in common is a 1, which we don't factor out. And we have x squared, x, and nothing. So the most they have in common, x, y, is nothing. So there is no greatest common factor here. So the first thing I'm going to do is see if I can break this up into two sets of parentheses by factoring. And like I said, your curriculums are going to show you how to do this certain ways. I'm going to show you how to do it by what I call the X factor system. So on the top here, you're going to have A times C. And on the bottom, you're going to write B. A means this first coefficient. C means the second coefficient. And C means the constant, the last coefficient. So here, my A is 1. My C is negative 16. 1 times negative 16 is negative 16. So I'm going to write a negative 16 at the top of my X. And then my middle coefficient, the negative 6, goes on the bottom. Then I'm looking for the pair of numbers to write on the sides that multiplies to the top and adds to the bottom. So in this example, I'm looking for numbers that multiply to negative 16 and add to negative 6. So some people can think about that and get it right away, and other times you want a list. So those are the numbers I'm putting on the side. So the first thing I want to think, okay, what multiplies to 16? Well, start just start going through it systematically. So I'm going to start with 1. 1 times what gives you 16? 16. 1 and 16, they don't give you add to negative 6 by adding in. You can add negative signs in here, but either adding or subtracting, that's not going to give you 6 anyway. So I'm going to think about the next pair. 2 times what gives you 16? Well, 2 and 8. Well, 2 and 8, if I subtract those, I can get negative 6. So I need to think about how do I maybe need to add some negative signs. If I add a negative to the 8, 2 plus that negative 8 gives me my negative 6. So that's the pair of numbers that I'm looking for here. It's kind of a puzzle. 2 times negative 8 gives you negative 16. 2 plus negative 8 gives you negative 6. So I've found those key numbers. So you can either erase your other pairs or you can just go ahead and circle those. And once you do more of these, they, the two numbers that you need start to come a little bit quicker. Now, once I find those two numbers, I'm going to look to see, is there a coefficient in front of my x squared term? There's no coefficient out there, so this is going to be the shorter way. It's a coefficient of 1, but it's an invisible one, so these are this is the short way. So my two parentheses, my variable in this problem is x, so I'm going to put an x here and an x here, and then my two numbers here are going to have was a positive 2, so plus 2, and a negative 8, so minus 8. And that's my answer. I can do this shorter way that I just showed you because there's no number in front of this x squared. If there was a 2 here, or a 3, or a 4, I'd have to do more steps. But because there isn't, I can go ahead and do this shorter way, which is going to give me an answer of letter B. Let's go ahead and look at another example using this x factor method. So here, I, once again, I do not have a greatest common factor to remove, so I don't have that first step to do, but I always want to check for a greatest common factor. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my x factor. 
Remember, it's going to be my first coefficient times my constant, or the last one. So 1 times negative 24 is negative 24, and that goes in the top. Then I'm going to have on my bottom my middle coefficient, which is a 2 here. So I'm going to go ahead and write that on the bottom. Now, I'm looking for numbers that multiply to the top but add to the bottom. So you might be able to, like right off the bat, you know your multiplication facts real well. You can think of that. So, but if not, you can start to go ahead and list them. So, and I do them systematically so I don't miss any. So I'm going to start with 1. 1 times what gives you 24? 24. Is there any way with negatives or positives to combine 1 and 24 to get 2? No. So I'm going to move to my next set. So I'm going to think about 2. 2 times what gives me 24? 2 times 12. Is there any way to combine 2 and 12 to get 2? No. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll look at 3. 3 times what gives me 24? Eight. Is there any way to combine with negatives or positives 8 and 3 to get 2? No. So I'm going to look at 4. Is there any way to combine, or 4 times what gives me 24? 6. Is there any way to combine 4 and 6 to get 2? Yeah, and here's a, a clue. 4 times 6 is 24, but this is a negative 24, so that means one of these is going to have to be negative. To get a 2, a positive 2, I'm going to want this 4 here to be negative. So these are my pair, is the pair that I want. So let's just to double check, negative 4 times 6 gives me negative 24. Negative 4 plus 6 is 2, so those are definitely my two key numbers that I've been looking for. And then I look and I see there's no number in front of my x squared, so I'm pretty excited because that means it's the shortcut way. So I'm going to go ahead and write my two sets of parentheses. The variable that I'm working with in this problem is x, so I put an x at the beginning of each one. And then I have a negative 4 here and a 6 as my key numbers, so I'm going to write minus 4 plus 6, and that's my answer. And it doesn't matter which, if the, if the answer in the multiple choice of it had been a plus 6 here and a minus 4 here, that's fine, as long as what's inside of the parentheses match. Now I'm going to show you one example of what a problem looks like when there is a number in front of the x squared. It's going to be a few more steps, and so you don't see very many of these on the EOI, so I'm only going to show you one, but you might have to watch this a few times so you can get all the steps down and take notes. So I first off, I'm going to check for a greatest common factor. However, there isn't one here, so I'm going to go ahead and draw my big X. And the same thing here is I take the first times the last, so here it's 4 times 15, which is 60, so that's going to go in the top. And then my middle number, 23, is what's going to go in the bottom. And now I'm going to have to once again think of numbers that multiply to 60, but add to 23. So as I look at those, I you can maybe you know your 60 facts really well and you can go ahead and figure that out pretty quick or you can use a calculator. But if not, just go ahead and list them. We have 1 times 60. That's not going to combine to give us the 23. I have 2 and 30. There's no way that that combines to get the 23. I have the 3 and 20. That does combine to get 23. So I'm going to go ahead and just double check that one. 
3 times 20 gives me positive 60, and 3 plus the 20 gives me positive 23. So that one does work out. However, this time I'm going to have to do more steps. So just to help us keep everything straight, I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite the big X over here, and then I'm going to rewrite the problem above that so that it looks like this. And I just did that to give me some more room to work. So when I have this, when I no longer have nothing out front, when I have any number in front of my X squared, I'm going to have to start, I'm going to add X's to my two key numbers here. And then the next step is I'm going to bring down the first and last term. And the reason I do the rewrite the x's here is because I'm actually breaking this 23x into 3x and 20x. And this is going to allow me to factor by grouping. And so I'm going to go ahead and look, just look at these two terms on the, the left side of the x. I have a 4x squared and a plus 3x, and I'm going to look for the greatest common factor. 4 and 3, the biggest they have is in common is 1, and we don't bother with 1, so then I'm going to look at the x's. I have x squared and x. The most they have in common is an x, so I'm going to write an x out front. And then I'm going to write what's left over in parentheses. So I have, I didn't mess with the number, so I'm going to rewrite the 4. I had an x squared. I pulled one of those x's out, so I'm left with an x plus the 3. And then I had an x here, and I pulled it out front, so I don't have any left. So I'm just going to go ahead and close those parentheses. Now I have, and now I'm going to look at these two sets of numbers. This is a positive 20, so I'm going to put a plus here. If that had been a negative 20, this would be subtraction. So they're going to match. And then I'm going to look for the greatest common factor here. I have a 20 and a 15. The largest number they have in common is a 5. Then I have an x, and 15 doesn't have any variables. So there's none in common for me to pull out. So it's just going to be a 5 here. So then in parentheses after that, I'm going to write what I have left. 20 divided by the 5 is 4. And I still have the x to write. And then 15 divided by 5 is a 3. So I have a plus 3. And then I close my parentheses. Now, the nice thing about doing it this way is do you notice how these parentheses match? In each of them, I have a 4x plus 3. So because they match, I know I did it right. It's kind of a way to self-check yourself. If these don't match, then you need to go back and find some mistake. So for my final step, I'm going to write one set of the matching, the 4x plus 3, and then in my second set, I'm going to write what's left out front. So I had an x plus 5. That's going to go here, x plus 5. And that's my final answer. So my answer here is going to be D.